on TV tonight, my children! Have you heard about that new reality show, Dark Entries? It's about a group of people stuck in a haunted house looking for a way out. And in tonight's episode, they're joined by a very special new housemate, John Constantine. The good Mr. Constantine is visited by a reality show producer, Matthew Keane, who tells him of their little show, about fear and how we cope with it. It's definitely going to be a rating smash hit. The only trouble is, the people in their constructed house have begun experiencing supernatural visions before they had a chance to spring the manufactured ones on the contestants. With a little monetary persuasion, Keane is able to convince John to investigate what it is that's haunting their little show, and advise them on how to deal with it. We are soon introduced to our cast of characters and the hellish visions that plague them. Steph and the burning man that she closes her eyes to avoid seeing. Ishmael, who sees ghostly headlights approaching him, and he feels a strange connection to Steph. Alice, who sees visions of a bird coming to scrape at her arms with its talons, though the scars on her arms indicate she has been cut by human hands. Jude, who like Steph and Ishmael, feels connected to Alice, though he won't reveal what his ghost is, just that he seems embarrassed by it. Akiko from Tokyo witnesses a needle pit. And finally, Tom, who speaks incessantly to Akiko, sees the walking corpse of an old woman he doesn't recognize. This is gonna turn out to be a Gordon Ramsay project called Haunted Kitchen or something, isn't it? Constantine thinks it's all a setup, that there's nothing actually affecting them but their own imagination, but becomes intrigued by Steph sensing a familiarity with her that he can't explain. After some back and forth, John is finally sent inside, though without his cigarettes, with a cover story to try to suss out what's going on from the inside. He meets the group and begins questioning everything, and substituting his smoking with drinking. He soon realizes that Steph is the spitting image of a woman he once knew, Helen Cawdor, long dead. But there are other things that don't make any sense. For starters, no one can remember are actually agreeing to be a part of the show. Can't recall how they got there, or why they signed up for this. It takes some doing, and some sleeping with Steph, but Constantine finally realizes the truth. This is not a reality show where the contestants see the dead. This is a reality show where the contestants are dead! Yes, this is a reality show in hell, run by demons, and this latest action was to boost their ratings, since so many in hell have wanted John Constantine as a participant in the torture. And since John willingly put himself in, signed legal agreements to be a part of it, he is trapped like the dead souls. In this case, he sees visions of a cannibal, Brian MacArthur. He was Helen Cawdor's boyfriend at the time, and had been researching the legend of a Highlander who had supposedly become a cannibal during the Highland clearances. Brian was either inspired by, or at least influenced by the spirit of the original, so that he murdered and ate Helen. And Constantine made sure to get his vengeance on him. Still, Brian is one of the many in hell who is all too happy to see John in the reality show, and wants to ensure he stays there forever. Ah, but why these particular people all together? And are these people all damned souls too? Not at all! They're from Limbo, not yet judged for heaven or hell. And they're all connected! Steph's Burning Man? It was her father, whom she murdered after the dismal way he treated her and her mother. It was intended to burn his palatial home to cover it up, but the explosion forced her into the street, where she was run over by Ishmael, whose own daughter had been run over by a car some years before. He committed suicide over what he had done. From here, Alice had read the story of what happened to Steph and Ishmael in the papers, and decided on another suicide attempt, this time trying to jump out of a big Building. She was building up the nerve when a bird came flying by and caused her to fall. Right on top of Jude, killing him as he was trying to mug an old woman on the streets. The story of the suicide was spread by Akiko on her blog, where she had discussed suicides. And she attempted to kill gropers and molesters on a subway train with some needles, only ending up being stabbed herself by it. Tom, an avid admirer of Akiko's blog, wanted to go to Tokyo to try to find her, 
and, needing money, attempted to go into an old woman's house to rob her, only to find she was already dead from a heart attack. Fleeing the house, he ran right into the police, who assumed he killed her and shot him dead. A string of death that brought them all to dark entries. As John starts disabling the methods by which the reality show can be watched, Brian MacArthur breaks into the house to take his own direct vengeance on Constantine for his part in getting him killed. Ishmael is torn apart, still able to speak since, you know, he's already dead, as the rest flee, trying to find the prize room promised for the contestants, and they eventually locate it. A TV that will allow them to escape to limbo. Trouble is, the prize is only supposed to be claimed by one. Still, it was Steph that started this chain, an empathic ability she never realized that she had. And with their connection, they could all go. Only with Ishmael ripped apart, the Link will not allow her to come to. The others make their escape, Steph even shoving Constantine through. He's able to escape as well, since he's still alive, and he ends up back in his apartment. Brian MacArthur tries to pursue, but fortunately Constantine is able to end this threat the same way any reality show is ended. By changing the channel and watching something else. And then throwing his TV down a flight of stairs. Good stuff, my children! Though it does make me wonder if John will still have to pay for his TV license after that. <laughs> With this, a very horror comic. Daniel! Your funeral is about to begin. 